Well, welcome everybody. Dr. J, Steve Jensen from the National Sales Academy and Impact Training. And it's Seymour People Day. And who other than Jamie Hayes is going to be showing us some absolute gold about marketing leads and sales leads. I'm sure you all do lots of marketing. And isn't it interesting when we get uh, a campaign that goes out into the marketplace, we say, oh, it's going to work great. And people do your downloads and all that sort of jazz. And they're not asking for help. They're just saying, I want your freebie. But there's a big differentiation between a marketing lead and a sales lead and, and who other than Jamie to actually show us what to do because he creates fantastic marketing leads, but also has them transport themselves into a sales lead. So I'll leave it to the guru to tell us what to do. Welcome, Jamie. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Steve, and hello, everybody that's uh, here with us today and uh, everybody that's watching on recording. And I do have some things to share with you. Typically, I've got a whole lot of slides with hopefully some takeaway content, but I'm going to um, start with a bit of an insight. Everybody watching this is selling something, selling their expertise and whatever like that, that in order to be effective in marketing and sales, you don't of any niche or any product or service, you actually don't have to be the world leader. And let me disclose to you, I am not the world's leading marketer. I'm not the world's leading Facebook advertiser. Uh, I'm not the world's leader in building sales funnel or in sales. All you have to do is be a little bit better at helping people move from their pain to their paradise than they are. And if you can just move them to the next step, then uh, you should, should not suffer, suffer um, what's it, um, imposter syndrome and you, know, you can be aggressively marketing your service. As a matter of fact, your service might be just as good as the guy next door, but you're a more effective marketer, which means you'll win more of the market. So as long as you can take somebody to the next level, and in this session, I really hope that I can share one or two insights that say, wow, here's some things I'm not doing that I could be doing that's gonna to lead to more leads and more sales. So that's the intent for today, Steve. Perfect. Well, I, I love that um, paradigm of pain to paradise. And, um, I'll, uh, I'll steal that if that's okay. That's oh, a, you knock a, yourself out. You, you're, you're a constant, you're a kleptomaniac. You're always stealing stuff from me, but I steal, <laughs> I steal stuff from you too. That's fine. Look, mate, um, you're absolutely spot on. And the, 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 the person who does it um, slightly differently and, and better will win the race. It's, um, and uh, they say, who does it first wins. And that's sometimes true. Uh, but you have to do it first and then continually evolve. So uh, I'll hand it over to you, my friend, and let's see what we're doing wrong and what, what we can change. Okay, what, great, what? great. You know, so we're looking at offers that convert, which is lead gen, and offers that convert in lead conversion. So marketing and sales, that's what, you know, and if we can share a few insights with these things, that would be great. And uh, Steve, you interrupt me, you know, if you want any, you know, any uh, questions or whatever like that. So th this is uh, where we are. We're looking at the, the marketing, which is lead generation that feeds the sales, which is lead conversion. And uh, just from the outside, I wanted to say what this is not. This is not about s what I call self-directed uh, prospects. You know, let's say in, in the fitness industries, these are people where when we ask them, how did you hear about us? They might say, I saw your sign, they're referred by members, I did a Google search, they're looking to join somewhere. So these are people who are looking. Um, and the contact method, uh, and Steve, as you and I know, often people confuse source with contact method, which is a method by which they made the inquiry. It might be a walk-in or info call or a homepage registration. So. Uh, this session today is not about that, and but I will tell you, any business that relies on self-directed prospects or whatever you call them, is not optimizing their business. So there's a whole lot of business that you can get um, from some much more proactive strategies. Of course, you want to you know do as well you can with all these, and it's great when that happened. I say that any business that say all my business comes from referrals is not taking advantage of marketing. Uh, or they purchase a trial offer, things like that. So what this session is about is ad generated prospects. 
which means the sources, they saw your ad, particularly on social media, most likely on a mobile device, and the contact method, they registered for info, purchased a trial offer, or, or, or maybe even you know, um, participated um, you know, in Messenger or think, you know, contact you via Messenger or things like that. So Steve, I uh, just wanted to paint the picture. That's what we're not doing and that's what we are doing today. Is that cool enough? I think it's great because um, we can focus on the stuff that we're good at. A lot of people actually do this. They said, oh, we'll actually create this, we'll create that. But what doesn't take place is we don't go outside the box to find out um, what we could do differently. And I must say that you, you, you hit a sore point with many, many, and uh, we have most everyone today is uh, from the fitness industry. Um, we have the, the referrals uh, that come in regularly. And I believe that sometimes we push that barrel far too much with our sales professionals and with our people. And we rely on that one or two um, ways to generate a qualified lead. Now, referral is great, but I've seen clubs in the past and studios that have just thrashed it to death and it burns the sales person. And it does. They, um, they, end up, they end up churning salespeople. Yes, and that's a, a bigger problem where we, if we go a little bit outside the box and, and start advertising, and we've got to pay to play these days, gone are the days of the freebies. I think it's absolute gold, and um, I think that everyone will get a lot of value from this. I think the role of a manager is to implement marketing that keeps salespeople fully engaged in conversations with prospective customers. That's right. And, you know, uh, and, and, and that's the metric. You know, am I engineering my marketing so that my salespeople are fully engaged, seeing as many hours or appointments per day, seeing prospective customers. That's right. And uh, the manager's role has evolved over the last, what I would suggest, five years. It's become a very multi-purpose uh, uh, responsibility from operations to cleaning to marketing and to sales. Um, but ultimately, I believe that the, uh, the sales salespeople or the people that do the sales should be given uh, a certain number of leads. Now, they need to be proactive, sure, but um, uh, the manager has a very difficult job. And uh, sometimes I find that there are so many things they have to do, they can only spend a very small amount of time to generate those leads. So if there's something in place that could be planned, say, I believe it needs to be quarterly or even half yearly to have the advertising and marketing done and dusted, that will then allows them to do those other things. So it's forewarned, forearmed. Sure. And in business, let's talk about management and managers. In business, people rise to their level in competence just because they were really good at sales or really good at fitness and they become the, the manager or the owner doesn't mean they've got any skills in marketing or those skills are up to date. Uh, so it's entirely possible to outsource your marketing you know, to, uh, to an employee, a consultant, an agency, blah, 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 blah. So the, the management's job is to generate results. Um, and uh, whether they do it themselves, often they are the constraint, they're the procrastinators because they simply don't know how. But anyway, we're going to share some hows right now. Let's dig into it. I'll come back to my trusty little PowerPoint. Great. So, um, this is about the ad-generated prospects, okay? Uh, now, I just want to, I, Steve, you know I like to get into a bit of theory. There is a book written called Changing for Good. Uh, those people who studied exercise science or health, you know, probably uh, read this by Boston professor James Brocheska. And he talked about the six stages of change. Let's quickly review this. I find this is really helpful when it comes to marketing. There are people in pre-contemplation, let's say in the weight loss industry, they're overweight they're or obese, but they're not thinking about it. You put an ad in front of them, it's wallpaper. Uh, just think of the um, national terrorism campaign, the AIDS campaign. Uh, th these were very expensive campaigns designed to shake the community to say, start thinking about it. We're going to put something in your letterbox to have a conversation with your children, whatever. You know, be a aware, not alarmed. Then you've got people in contemplation. These are people, uh, let's say, in, in weight, you know, they're overweight or obese, and they're thinking about it. Tony Robbins, and I know you've worked with Tony Robbins, Steve, uh, he, they use the word, oh, I should. You know, he, he says they're shooting all over themselves. So, th so they are potential market. Then those in preparation, or, or they're doing research. They're actually looking for solution. And this is where 
search engine optimization of your website, you know, and SEO strategies can really help and being front and centre, being everywhere. Then those taking action, joining a club, uh, you know, starting running, buying some running shoes, joining Weight Watchers, whatever, you know, getting an online, you know, the Sweat app or, you know, uh, Les Mills online, do, joining something anyway, doing something. Then you've got maintenance and a normal part of maintenance is relapse and, and this is where people often switch. And then contemplation, sorry, completion. We've all got members who are at completion, which means not coming to the club is not an option for them. You know, it, uh, although they there is potential that they can switch to you from another club to you. So, and and so here are a whole of different markets. So, it's really good for a marketer to think. Okay, who am I targeting? Now, the people who are self-generated, who who are doing research and stuff like that. They are either in level three, or level four, and the switches may be level five and level six. Um, but the ones uh, who are saying, sure, no, one day, or maybe, yep, I should do that, they're in uh, level two or level three. They're in contemplation or preparation. So I find this framework, when you're doing any marketing, say, who am I targeting? You know, and, and this can really help in planning not just your ad creative, but also your offer. So this is the self-directed prospects. This is the ad generated prospects. And of course, if you only rely, you know, on the self-generated prospects, you're, you know, you're not going to be, um, you know, sort of optimizing your business. So that's just a bit of a, a, a theoretical framework to say, okay, who's this ad creative what's the facebook ad audience i'm choosing you know important decisions like that so you're not just you know going out everywhere to every you know for everybody this is actually um what uh, a lot of people refer to as their avatar and making sure that if you're going to do ads and it's interesting i was talking to a number of businesses just last week predominantly in health and wellness and um they, they were saying this was their avatar now, interestingly enough, after we did give them, uh, we got a very small sheet that people can utilize. Um, it, it, it came out that they had four avatars. And I said, well, what are, what's your marketing and advertising for the separate avatars? And they said, well, we just do a club launch. And um, for what you're saying there, they might be um, <laughs> in, in the contemplating stage, but they're not actually going to take action, but then maybe have copy and a call to action that actually stimulates that avatar makes a big difference. So it might be something for everyone to think about. Who who are your two or three avatars? Or are you ad, ad, only advertising to one person or you're putting everybody under one roof? It's uh, uh, something that I'm finding is coming up quite regularly. Absolutely. And part of your marketing, people want to know, are there other people like me there? Hmm. You know, is this for me? And I'll put it to any fitness operator. The 50 bucks a week from a super fit uh, young, um, you know, uh, athlete is the same 50 bucks as an overweight, obese 50 year old person who maybe m might only come once or twice a week. It's the same 50 bucks. And if you want more of those 50 bucks <laughs> per week, if you want to build your direct debit, you want to appeal to multiple avatars. Uh, what was the saying? If you look through Jim Brown's eyes, you'll sell Jim Brown what Jim Brown buys. Right. Well, <laughs> I think it's great uh, that we're all on the same page here because I'm finding it's quite frustrating when people say, I'm not getting any leads. I say, well, what's your avatar? They say, oh, it's, it's a, 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 a 30 to a 55 uh, man and woman, da, da, da. And I said, well, hang on a tick. We need to drill down a little bit more if anybody would like to have uh, our avatar sheet uh, just uh, put put the names in comments for those people watching it on uh, replay and we'll certainly send it out to you it might be it might be addicted golfers or even beginner golfers who want to add five yards to their drive mm. they might pay a temp they they might pay two thousand dollars for a set of clubs to help achieve that but they definitely paid two thousand dollars or if they've got pain that's stopping them doing that they might pay two thousand dollars for a solution so let, that's, this is setting the scene. Uh, so uh, thanks for your help there, Steve. Let's so go. Um, so here's a big insight. Firstly, nobody looks at their social feed 
to look for your ad or any ad. So when people pick up their mobile phone, go through their social feed, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever it is, they are not looking for your ad. It's a social sharing media. But why do we advertise there? Because that's where the eyeballs are. You know, why are Google and Facebook, all these huge companies, spending billions to develop self-driving cars? Because it means that people won't have to concentrate on the road. They'll spend more time looking at their screens. <laughs> so, the, so the advertising, I'm serious. I'm deadly serious. The advertising inventory goes up because there's more eyeball time on the screens. So the, well, if you look at people in the back seat of a car, that's what they're doing these days. They're not reading a magazine. They're oh, absolutely. In the, yeah. On their mobile phone, you're right. <laughs> it's just like you know what they, the question asked of the famous bank robber, why do you rob banks? And he said, you stupid dummy. That's where the money is. <laughs> so uh, let's, let's come back. Uh, there we go. So, um, so the challenge is to put the right ad in front of the right target market, when I say the right ad with the right creative, the, you know, uh, which creative means image or video, uh, with the right message, which is text, uh, with the right headline, uh, with the right CTA or call to action, put it in front of the right target market and you're dead right, a club might have three or four avatars at the right time, because you, you know, Paul Brown is a great fisherman and he knows if he wants to catch this fish, he uses this bait, he goes to this fishing area at this time when the fish are hungry, so the right time, thank you, Paul, uh, with the right offer. So, you know, and that's what we're talking about today, the right offer. So when we look at the sales funnel, um, I, I know I'm using, it, this looks like the previous slide, but let's look at the process that your prospect is going to go through. Firstly, um, the ad stops them. It's, it's got to be a thumb stopper. They're not looking for ad, but they say, oh, that's interesting. And it stops their thumb, it stops the feed. So they stop and read the ad. Then they click on learn more, or it might be get offer or something like that. But they click on the CTA box, the learn more box. That takes them out of Facebook or out of Instagram. And that's the goal, to take them out of Facebook to your landing page and they visit your landing page and they and you want to make sure that that image uh, has the same look or feel as your ad otherwise they'll just bounce back out and hopefully you'll get a conversion there which may, like a marketing conversion which means they they register for your in, info session so let's just note there are two points of conversion one is they clicked on learn more and the other one is they registered for an info session. So they, they are two measurable uh, behaviours. Then, uh, let's move into sales. They get a call from the salesperson ASAP. And Steve, let's just stop. Could you remind people why that is so important? Okay, with the, with the call, the person's gone into their green brain. They're excited. They say, there's a tangible, but uh, I'm interested. As soon as they start getting onto other things, that becomes less and less important. And it's interesting, it's become shorter and shorter. The quicker they hear something from you, uh, whether you connect or not, it's in a different kettle of fish, but they've got to engage. Now, there's lots of ways to do that. A, a telephone call with a voicemail, fine. I believe it's really important if you do get that voicemail now, you send a, an acuity link or a link to your diary where they can click the button and then say, well, I was driving the car. But I think it's, we've got to go one step further with that. And as soon as we get on to the telephone, you've got to have a prompt that reminds you how to build rapport, find compelling argument, and then make sure that you either get them onto Zoom or get them to book an appointment. So could you, you just re re see, sorry, could you just repeat what you just said? As soon as you get, as soon so as you get them on the phone. As soon as you get on the phone. You've got to make sure that you build a bit of rapport, not massive rapport, commonality is critical and, and so forth. Once you've done that, you've got to quickly make sure you find your source codes, but make sure you find compelling argument. In other words, find out what their problem is, what their pain to paradise is. But with that, you've got to do a little bit of teaching, show them you're expert. And then 
And then you're then going to do whatever's next. You either book an appointment, you flip them onto Zoom uh, because you want to get action immediately. If you leave it after three days, the, the lead is dead if they've not even spoken to you. That's really and so when you, when you say get in contact with them, how quickly? Oh, within a while, minute. Uh, look, they used to say two to five minutes, but the, the statistics now coming, they've been coming down to seconds, but I'm being a bit kind here saying about a minute to two minutes. Right. So I would say that what I just asked you to repeat is one of the weakest links. And a lot of people say, oh, I've tried Facebook ads, they don't work, or oh, Instagram ads, they don't work, because they aren't developing the soft skills for that phone call, that contact call, and they're not managing that correctly. They're not doing PDR. What does that stand for? Practice, Practice drill, drill, reverse. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We've got to make sure we do PDR regularly. And by the way, Jamie, you've hit on a, a note here. An, an ad that creates an inquiry v phone v web needs to have a conversation. Now, the conversation can be via messenger, but you've got to get voice to voice, eyeball to eyeball, and ideally belly to belly. And the quicker we can do that, uh, the better. Um, yeah, my my favorite heard, method is a, a phone call. Yeah. Yeah. It's the quickest and easiest way of doing it. And uh, people just take it for granted. They say, I'm too busy to do it. I said, well, mm. hang on a tick. Are you making enough sales? Uh, that's really important. And, and look, just, just while we're at it, we, we don't have time to go into all the mechanics of it, but when somebody clicks that thank you page and registers, they will, so the clicks to the landing page, puts in their name, phone number, you know, their first name, phone number and email, they'll go through the thank you page. And then the thank you page can say, look, you know, can have a video from you. I'll call you in a few minutes. I'll be calling from this phone number. So you'll recognize my number and stuff like that. So there's a whole lot of tweaks on that uh, thank you page that can um, make a difference to the number of people that, you know, that actually receive the call. And, uh, and also that thank you page can have a whole lot of testimonials from people who achieve the specific result that that person wanted, you know. Uh, so uh, there's lots of um, stuff, but we can get into that, we we'll drill into that. Let's get, get going. I, I don't want to run out of content in the time. So, um, so they get a call from the salespeople ASAP. They book an info session and preferably we used to call it SDA, same day appointment, thanks Casey, and uh, or the very next day, and that appointment might be in the centre or a Zoom, you know, a Zoom session. And then, this is a measurable, uh, did they show up for the session? Now, whether they showed up for the session depends upon how compelling you were, were over the phone. Um, and it may, and there are other things using technology to have a, an SMS reminder, um, an email reminder if it's if it's not the same day or the very next day, and finally the other measurable is did they join as a as a member? So Steve, uh, when it comes to metrics, you know these I know your clients they measure every bit of this. That's right, and um, one of the things you mentioned there, and I think it's it sometimes goes there's no deep dive in this, and I'm not going to do a deep dive now, but their ability to show is not governed on about the information you've given. I think people really get this wrong. The ad might get them compelled to say, I'm interested. We go through the rapport, we find compelling reason, we teach a bit, and then we book them in for a session. They're not turning up uh, just to have a conversation. Um, and they're coming to meet you and now, so everyone says, oh, they come to meet you. It's always a relationship. There's, one, there's an and that's missing. And the and is you're coming to, to, to get something. Get, give them something of value. Now, when I say of value, we call it success plan, action plan. Tell them, oh, interesting, Jamie. I'll put that in your success plan. I'll give that to you. I'll prepare this for you. I'll give you one of these when you turn up. Uh, look, I've got a, one of our clients. I've got a, 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 a five-point plan that they use. It was amazing. It's uh, exactly what you're looking for. And he's running now his Achilles. I'll get that organized for you. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have an action plan and you say you'll prepare it for them before they turn up. So when you do your confirmation call with a text, if need be, say, oh, I'm looking forward to helping you get ready for football and I've got your action plan to give you and I've got all this good stuff. Now, the question I ask everybody is how much would the prospect pay for the action plan? If it's 10, 20, 30 bucks, you've done a good job. If it's just a whole lot of noise, well, the value is low. 
uh, I think there's a has to be a small tangible. It could just be a few phone numbers. It could be a coupon to go to Rebel Sports. Who knows? But have something else other mm -hmm. than coming to meet you. And See, they that certainly is, don't. That, that is don't pure. Club. They don't want to buy the club. No, 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 they want a solution. That is pure gold because lots of people, including you know, gee, health inspiration, Diaflex, uh, you know, operators, you know, they have that action plan. They have a success plan. But if they don't mention it in that call, they're missing a golden opportunity. So uh, they might have it, but they're just not mentioning it. You know, so uh, that's absolutely fantastic. You know, gee, there's. Uh, there's some takeaway here. So you can can everybody see I'm pumping Steve for gold. <laughs> so look, it's just like, it's like a chain, okay. And so let's look get into some arithmetic here, and you know, so this process is a chain. So we've got marketing, which is the top stuff, and then we've got sales, which is the bottom stuff. Now um, here's a few tips: keep a score of each step, learn and adapt. Okay, I've got twenty percent. What can I do to get thirty percent? Work to improve the percentage on each step. Be a long-term player. Don't just start, you know, run Facebook ads today. Gee, I didn't make sales tomorrow. Facebook ads don't work. You've got to be a long-term player. This is a long-term investment. And when you get something that's working, just rinse and repeat. You don't have to reinvent, just rinse and repeat, you know, and keep a step. Uh, now, when it comes to the maths, let's say you measure each step and you give each step one point. But let's say when it comes for showing up for the session, uh, you get uh, a pretty low score on that. Is that truly eight out of nine? Does that mean you'll make eight out of nine sales? No, it does not. And I'll show you why. Because we're using the analogy of a chain. We need to use multipliers. So if any step, if we have a weak link, show up for the session, or uh, registering for the info session if any of those is a zero the end result is going to be a zero so these are they're they're not you don't add up these steps you multiply these steps so just one weak link um and you need to be you know have a process of analyzing your numbers per salesperson not across the club uh so that you find out where is our weak link so that's where you go to work does that make sense Let's keep it going. We're learning some good stuff, I hope. Hopefully, people have already got an insight. And Steve, people watching right now, you know, it, they can put up their hand, go into the chat. I'm not watching the chat. I'll let you watch the chat just in case they've got any key questions. So here's a picture of an old bucket brigade, firemen passing the pails of water. So just consume, you know, it's marketing, passing lead to salespeople. So each one of those is the step. Now, if one of those guys sat down, they're not going to put out the fire. So. There's a little cartoon. So today we're talking about marketing um, conversion and sales conversion. So when you're creating your ad, nobody's looking for your ad, remember? You want it so that you know what fish you're aiming for and your ad needs a hook that that fish, and we could interview uh, the fisherman, Paul Brown, and we could say, if you want to catch this fish, what? What, what, what bait do you use? This fish, what bait? When do you go? Because you, know, you want that person, it needs to be a thumb stop of where they say, gee, that looks interesting. It's all based on the hook in your ad. Let me repeat that. It's all based on the hook in your ad. The hook in your ad. Um, but I just want to publish a warning to everybody before you go start creating Facebook ads. Please go to Facebook advertising policies. As a matter of fact, whoever's responsible for marketing should go there every month because they change it without notice and read all the ad policies, particularly in regards to personal attributes and personal health. And also this applies, of course, to Facebook, Instagram, Messenger. Uh, and Facebook don't just look at your ad, they look at the content of your landing page because we don't want to hear stories of people saying, oh, I... I attended Steve and Jamie's webinar. I started placing ads, and I got my Facebook ad account shut down because the it's not a person that looks at your ad; it's the algorithm, and they're getting awfully twitchy. So, um, so please, please be be careful. So, Steve, here's a huge insight: the offer you use in your ad need not be the final offer you make, and the one most people buy in your sales process, 
Okay, so you can use an offer in your ad. You're still going to offer it to them, but you may have a secondary offer, and that's what most people buy. So when we come to that big picture presentation, when we're uh, we've already done gone through the qualification stage and the proofing stage, um, and uh, we, we've identified you know what their true goals are and their motivations. You know their four Ws. You know. Um, we, we should be happy to sell them what we advertised, but there may be an offer that's better for them and better for you. And definitely when it comes to retention, those people that pre-signed for a 12-month uh, contract keep their memberships longer than those people who go to month to month. But it requires a sales process to deliver that. Look, your, the, the low entry, easy entry programs, whether it's free or whether it's paid for, and there's lots of data that says it's better if it's paid for these days. Um, the hook, uh, you're spot on, and not many people talk about it. The hook is just to get the inquiry to find compelling, to get, get permission to have a conversation. So whatever you're saying in your ad that gets that action, you've got to have what's next mentality. We use this quite regularly, and that hook is just to say, well, hang on a tick. Um, you wanted this, but let's find out if it's really the right fit. My job is not to sell you anything. It's just to help you get rid of that pain so you have that paradise. Um, gee whiz, uh, you can certainly have the hook or whatever it may be, but, but you can't actually sell it to them. You've got to say, well, uh, let's get you to here. Would you like you to get you to here? And then you present them something different. And then you just have a cash in on what the hook was. Now that's the, the operative word. You use the hook as a cash in as an operative where they get it as well as getting what they really need. Give them what they want, not what you're trying to sell them. Absolutely. And, and look, when, with people we're, you know, that we're working with, um, you know, we provide you know, marketing that uh, converts and the sales process convert and from time to time that you know people want to innovate and they say look you know i want to run this ad with this offer and i say whoa 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 just before you do that just before you place the ad what is your sales conversion strategy because i see a lot of market for instance a seven day trial uh it might be a completely free seven day trial with no money down not even one dollar um i don't think that's an easy one to convert <laughs> I think the conversion rate on a seven-day trial, you know, or a 30 days free or whatever like that is pretty difficult. If it's 30 days free, let's say on a lead box or whatever like that, uh, but it's based upon, um, you know, qualifying tougher and them pre-agreeing to a direct debit, which is going to happen straight away, or they're putting $1 on their credit card, then you've got something that's, you know, with a filter process that's with a high conversion rate. So just as a discipline, before the marketer goes off with some fancy ad, which is going to create a whole lot of inquiries, the sales person needs to come in, or you have to put in your sales hat and say, okay, here's that offer that we're going to run in the Facebook ad. What is our conversion strategy? Let's role play that conversion strategy. And if they not confident having role play on that um, big picture presentation, the conversion strategy, don't waste your money on the ad. No, you're, yeah. absolutely right you're, spinning, you're spinning everybody's wheels. Absolutely. And uh, well, we've been pushing this for quite some time, especially with our sales authority club members. We, we have a process called the, it's the uh, sales conversion uh, strategy that's linked to the closing strategy. They have to write it out before the salespeople get opportunity with the lead. So, and then they've had their role play. We found this have made a significant difference because the marketers don't have that sales hat on all the time. They, they've got to have the conversion. The conversion is the key. It's not getting lots of leads. So do you have any examples of a hook that worked well and then flipped into something that was a little bit bigger? I'm sure some of the guys from the fitness industry would, would love an example or two. And guys, uh, uh, Christina, uh, Justin and Amanda, please feel free to ask uh, questions here. This is why we have Jamie live in meeting, so you can actually ask him sure. questions. And and I see some uh, chats come in. So definitely. So for instance, we we run six week campaigns every day of the year, three hundred sixty five days of the year. With you know, versus six week challenge in centre for members, where everybody does it all the same. We run six week offers all the time. Sometimes it's six weeks free but the landing page explains that if they lose the prescribed amount of weight following our weight loss program, 
uh, within six weeks, they will get an additional six weeks completely free. And we have many, many people winning that prize. So, um, uh, however... Hang on a tick. So they'll say uh, it's, they'll pay yeah, and they will get it for free if they do A, B and C. No, they'll get an additional six weeks free. Weeks. That's terrific. That's yeah. a nice little hook because that's uh, saying they are going to get what you promised, but you also want to give them the result and we're going to celebrate the result by making it for free. That's, that's, that's great. Hope you write that down, guys. However, 90% of the people that respond to that six week campaign or six weeks free purchase a 12 month direct debit membership. They still get the six weeks free if, you know, if they lose a prescribed amount of weight in six weeks. And but Jamie, because, you, because we are following your sales processes, uh, you know, in sales processes we've developed with the, with the, uh, the three steps of the qualification, you know, the proper qualification, the, uh, you know, the proper proofing, the proper uh, big picture presentation with a proper alternative choice and, and this role played, role played, role played, role played, practice drill rehearsed, you know, uh, 90% of those who join um, pre, you know, pre commit to paying typically like uh, $100 up front and on direct debit for 12 months. Well done. Good. That's a, that's a nice uh, way of actually putting a free offer out there, but actually they have to pay. How much do they pay for that six weeks as, the, as an example? And I know you work with lots $500, of $500, you know. How much? $500. Yeah, so we do have a small percentage that do pay five hundred dollars, you know, up front. Um, but uh, yeah, so it, it's either that or um, you know, go on direct debit. So and what it's a would no be the, the hook though? What would they pay for the six weeks for the hook? They'd pay five hundred dollars. They'd they'd, they'd pre-purchase if you know a, a six-week program of five hundred dollars, and if they lose a prescribed amount of weight following the program, and we go out of our way to help them win, I can assure you. Because because we actually want their stories, and you can go to some of our websites and you can see real live people who are celebrating because they've won, they've achieved that weight loss goal in the first six weeks, and they have won an additional six weeks free. So your marketing and advertising is all blended into your closing strategy. And by the Completely. way, it's not about closing today, but I'm just going to throw this uh, uh, ten seconds in. I was told the other day that you can actually uh, put an offer to somebody that could be fair and reasonably priced for you. So you get an ROI and the person gets value. And you can always, if you don't want to do it cheap, when you do it cheap, you cry a million tears because you're going to have a lot of other people <laughs> want to do it cheap. But what you do is you actually sell it for what it is, for what it's worth. You'll hear me strong here. And if you can give a guarantee that they can get their money back. So that takes away the risk. In other words, they don't having to have say, well, gee, will it work? I say, well, I'm going to do my best to make it work. And I, my risk level has reduced quite significantly. You can actually charge what you want and give them a time frame within a period. So let's say within three weeks, within two weeks, within whatever, if you're not feeling silly and seeing value, you're getting, not getting uh, you know, um, what we said, um, you can actually uh, have this guarantee. We, we, uh, and there's lots of ways to do that. But that was echoed with me with one of our other Seymour people, Michael Griffith. And uh, he's, he works with businesses that have significant high thousand dollar products and services they pay up front. But if they pay, but they'll have a guarantee. He said the results, the results and closing, uh, the fear disappears and the excitement is exuberated. Mm. Fantastic. Yeah. I mean, Steve, you are sharing just gold there. Uh, so let's continue. So uh, as we said, you know, the offer you use in your ad may not be the final offer you make uh, and the one most prospects buy in your sales process. So uh, let's, uh, I just wanted to use an example. Let's say people are standing in line in a bank. Hardly anybody does that anymore, but let's say, or in a cafe, and you've got a lead box there. I'm actually convinced lead boxes win, uh, work, but uh, remember we're, we want to appeal to those people in uh, contemplation. Oh yeah, you know, I really need to do something about m my weight. And if there is an offer there that says, gee, uh, that sounds interesting. You know, I could lose weight and blah, blah, blah. And by the way, lead boxes don't have to comply with Facebook advertising guidelines. So they're pretty interesting. You know, I always find uh, it's interesting to see what works on a good old fashioned lead box 
Um, so, <clears throat> so going back to our fish analogy, gee, that looks interesting. So what you put on your hook uh, to get attention and desired action response from somebody not looking for your ad. So these people are not looking for your ad, they're standing in line in the bank or in the cafe, they see your lead box and say, gee, that looks interesting, I think I'll fill out one of those things. So you want to sort of put it in that perspective. It needs to have a hook. So um I interrupt you there, Jamie. There's yes, a, Steve. On the, on the lead box front, I've seen a lot of clubs these days um, have gone one step further. So you know how we go into our restaurants now with a good old Q code? What yeah. they have is they go, ah, oh, they've got a little Q code there. So they're just sitting in line. They don't have a pen on the pens buggered on, <laughs> on the yeah. lead box. So all they do is they push the button on the Q code. They go, bip, 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 bip. And uh, while they're in the post office waiting, that has been a, a, a quite a, a, sh a, a big shift in the last 12 months. Very Maybe interesting. Very interesting. Don't that. even need to fill something out. Just go straight on that. Yeah, <laughs> more gold. More gold. You can keep it coming. So let's go. And um, so let's look now. We've, we've looked a little bit at marketing. Let's look at sales lead conversion. Uh, and remind us of the change. So we, first we've got to manage that expectation in the ad, the landing page, and, uh, um, and, and what's said in that contact phone call. So we've got the contact them ASAP. We want to use a contact script. We want to have a confirmation strategy, particularly the next day, the next day, of SMS, you know, um, emails, audio messages, things like that targeted to them, looking forward to seeing you, I'll be waiting in reception, whole lot of tried and true practices. Uh, it might be an in-person presentation in the club or a Zoom presentation. We are selling more and more uh, weight loss memberships uh, via Zoom at exactly the same rate, um, but you're no longer constrained by your territory, are you? You know, you, you, you know somebody in uh, Wollongong can sell a weight loss membership in Darwin, so at, at the exact same rate. Must be this. It must, it'll be a, a, a necessity skill in the future. Matter of fact, based on your push, I've actually got the, uh, the two set series are going to be taking place. We'll have a full six week program soon, and also a one hour. Oh, yeah. But wait. you're right. It's a. It, it's going to be commonplace. It's new at the moment, and you know we can. It's not just because of COVID. The customers sure. are expecting it. So. Um, So we've got, and then we're into the sales process, uh, process, you know, needs to be managed, qualification, needs, wants, four Ws, the presentation proof, you know, customised to them, minor commitments, the big picture price presentation. So this too is a chain. The marketing funnel is a chain. The sales process is a chain. Each step, you know, needs to be a successful step. It needs to be practised, drilled, rehearsed systemized you know so that um the, everybody knows exactly what's happening and, and you you can figure out where your weakest link is so you, you really got to look at it like a chain um if you want to achieve that look here is um let me just read this out uh gavin one of our partners just an update from low Hut monday we joined two both 12 months had uh, eight appointments, seven shows, so we had five to follow up. Um, Tuesday we had five all on 12 months. Today we joined five more, so 12 for the week so far. Cost of the Facebook ad over 10 days was $618. We've done a total of 23 sales from the ad. That's $37,950 worth of memberships plus we'll sell supplements to them. And we get referrals from them soon. Tonight we turn the ad back on for another uh, a $600 budget so far. We have three leads. Happy to talk to anybody who wants more information. Blah blah blah. So, uh, I know Gavin, he's uh, you know, we work with Gavin and so forth in the past, and uh, uh, he actually is a, a good operator, but he actually uses your your lead generating um funnel, though. He uses the principles definitely all and, and rarely changes it. <laughs> yeah, she's having to turn it off. He's getting too many leads with it. Uh, he does. Yeah, he does. And, and um, you know, one of the problems with marketers is the shiny new thing. Oh, I've got to recreate my marketing, recreate my marketing. Um, and uh, But if they've got an ads that work, just fine tune that chain, fine tune that chain. You know, monitor and measure your percentages and, um, and, and that's going to, you know, lead to, to greater success. Now, 
before we go any further, I just want to throw it out to Christina, Justin, uh, Amanda. Um, I want to come off mute and ask Jamie a question. Uh, we've uh, gone through, what, uh, 16 modalities this morning. I've been, I jot them down as we go. Um, I'm sure you've got a question or two for your business, if you'd like to have a little bit of a conversation with uh, Jamie. Anyone like to pop off mute uh, and uh, ask Jamie a question? Oh, I see Amanda's finger there. <laughs> when you say um, book an information session, yeah, that's book a session and come in and have a chat. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, let's, let's use uh, fitness club lingo. That might be a tour, consultation, yes. you know, info session. Uh, and, and, of course, you've got to just depend upon your avatar. You might, you know, adjust what you call that, you know. We call it um, a free first consultation. Great. Free first consultation. Yep. Mm. Um, and you know, whether even um, or just a straight out consultation, you know, or a review. So there's lots of things you could call it and what you call it may impact on the number of people show and the number of people who join. So you've got to be careful of your language as well. Mm. Yeah. So it can be either that it can be, you know, in person. We typically have a high conversion rate in center in person. Uh, than you know a Zoom based call, but uh, it's it's only a small difference. You know it might be um, seventy percent conversion rate in centre, but fifty percent conversion rate via Zoom. Yeah, we don't have the need for the Zoom because things are basically back to normal in Hobart at the moment. That's what they said in New South Wales. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's good to have an insurance policy. You know, keep your salespeople busy, keep your coaches, your trainers busy. Um, and uh, just like an investment strategy, don't put all your eggs in one basket now. I think it makes sense to be prudent and say, well, you know, can we have a, um, a strategy where our people, you know, maybe for three hours per week, uh, they've got 12 online clients. You know, typically um, a coach can, can see, you know, four clients per hour, you know, in a three-hour shift, that's 12. You know, if they're paying 30 bucks, that's, you know, at 360 bucks a week, which is 15 grand a year on direct debit, it's not going to make or break a club, but certainly it won't hurt. <laughs> um, Amanda, I'll jump in there. Um, given that everyone has gone normal is not normal, and let's just say you've got a lead to, a lead to contact percentage. Lead to contact percentage is where we have the conversation, but if the, the contact to booked appointment is uh, I haven't got time, I've got to pick up the kids, I'll get back to you and so forth. Sometimes when we do our follow-up with uh, people that leads have not booked an appointment and or maybe they booked and not showed. And we can say, well, look, you know, let's save you a little bit of time. But remember, that's one of the five triggers, save time, um, reduce worry, not alone, and um, make money and reduce costs. They're the five triggers. So if I can save you some time, Bob or Mary, and look, let's do, you've got internet, Let's just have a quick chat on the phone. I'll show you some of the things so you don't have to jump in the car, find a car park, come in, and so forth. I know it's better if they can, but uh, you can actually do um, quite well by having your salespeople, especially in downtime, uh, when the people are uh, can't get in the car and they may be at work. Well, so let's have a quick chat on Zoom. You'll find that that'll be something that will be quite handy. And guess what? Salespeople that uh, may be working from home for you as well. They could actually do some work for you, have a virtual background. Uh, there's lots of things that will happen in the fitness industry in the next year to two years. Mark my words, that'll be virtual. So just keep that just in the back of your head. Okay. Yep. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, so Steve, I'm going to finish off with uh, one big problem. And this is the reason people actually won't uh, implement you know, the advice we're sharing this morning or why they'll put it off or procrastinate and things like that. Uh, this is a message you, know, you and I have discussed before. Let me, I've got a little PowerPoint, which some may, may have seen before, but let's have a quick look at it. Um, and this uh, is from the famous book, um, who not how. So let's say somebody watching this says, okay, I can see the opportunity here to, instead of relying on self-generated leads, that I can actually generate a whole bunch of extra leads and I can uh, better manage my sales process. So there's a whole lot of what's that 
I could be doing that will not only make a significant difference to the profitability of the business, but even the viability of the business, particularly in uncertain times. And I'll be able to pay myself more in profit distribution or commission or, or, or whatever. So they're recognising that there's a what that they could be doing, but the reason they're not doing, because it's going to take a lot of months, a lot of study, a lot of purchasing technology of learning the right things and learning the wrong things to figure out how to do all the steps in that marketing chain, all the steps in that sales chain. So, and this is going to lead to massive procrastination. I'll put it off. It's all too hard. Every, you know, gee, Jamie's sort of further complicated. It. But asking yourself that how question is the wrong thing. So there's a lot of possible what you could achieve, increasing leads and sales opportunities, having online programs, selling online memberships, having program to attract untapped markets, running Facebook paid ads, you know, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, run effective organic traffic promotions, or figure out how to do all that. So there's a whole lot of what stuff I could be doing or should be doing or like that. And uh, you know, and people just go into overwhelm and they just never ever get it done because they're saying, well, look, I'll look at that later. I won't do it now because I actually don't know how. They're asking themselves the wrong question. They should be asking, who can do this for me? Who's already got marketing that I could grab and use? Who's already got sales processes I could grab and use? Might have to pay for them, but who gives a damn, you know? And uh, because the difference, if, if they try and figure it out all by themselves, DIY, it might take 12 months or never. But if they simply ask the who, they say, who's already got the online program? Who's already got the marketing? Who's already got the sales process? They might be able to, uh, let's say, start of February, have a highly profitable additional source of memberships uh, leads and memberships going on, and the, on the 1st of February and then uh, and, and and they're not going to miss you know because the opportunity cost of missed sales, missed revenue, frustration, stress and even business risk and then they've got the freedom to say gee I've got another agenda there's something else I want to achieve in my business and so there is another what so uh, and that book you know who not how said instead of procrastinating instead of saying how do i do this how do i do that you know i don't want to pay i don't want to get ripped off all that sort of stuff and steve you and i you know for most of our programs work on a basis that gee month to month if we're not delivering value you can just stop you know or you th you say gee i've learned everything you can from jamie and steve or you know or jamie's weight loss programs or marketing or steve's sales programs um i don't need them anymore you know, I can do it all myself. I've got a team that can do it all myself. Great, go do it all yourself. But you, meanwhile, you've been making money and you saved yourself a lot of frustration. So I'm going to finish there. Happy with uh, any questions. Um, let me stop sharing. You know, I'm just jamie at dietflex.com.au. Steve's got my details. Steve, happy to answer any questions. But uh, for God's sake, you know, please... Um, if you've got an opportunity in your business, you've got to untap resources in facilities, in great people that you don't want to stand down, you know, who could uh, have more clients and you could have more members. You know, here's some solid action plans that you can implement. And uh, uh, I'm standing by, Steve, you and Darren and your team are standing by, you know, so there's things they can do to immediately add to their business. Well, Jamie, it's been gold today because it's gone from get, getting the lead, having a process, making sure there's a conversion model in place. And, and you're absolutely correct. Um, trying, to, trying to learn how to do all that stuff all on your own um, is something that uh, I know in my younger days, I used to go, oh, do you want to learn that? I want to learn that because I like to do, big doer. But as I've got older and so forth, it's become so technically orientated. I like to learn, but I certainly don't get uh, involved in the, the, the doing. I find much smarter and better people to do my 
uh, I find who's, and more importantly, um, it saves me a stack of money and reduces my stress because I know it gets done right. And um, I think when it comes down to Facebook ads and pay to play, I don't think any business can expect to get a result anymore with just doing the same old, do the, do, do the same um, and you don't get the same, you get disappointed. I don't believe that there's a possibility of, of progression uh, in the next say two to three, three, five years or ongoing, unless we continually modify and reinvent ourselves. And if we don't reinvent ourselves regularly and do things differently, our competitors will. And, and, and also when it comes to marketing, particularly online marketing, things like that, you could learn all the lessons and see, I'm enrolled in courses too. Uh, and then the rules change, you know, so, so it's not just learning how to execute, but you know, um, you need to learn how to stay up to date, you know, that's right. And, you know, and to, and to be in job. masterminds and be in groups that, you know, are constantly staying up to date and, and sharing best practices. It's like my mum used to say, if I like mowing the lawn, now go out there and mow the lawn and so forth. If not, we'll get a, I'll get you doing the roof that you much prefer to do. And we'll get a gardener. <laughs> <laughs> She's a, gee, your mother is a clever outsourcer. Good well, on you, Joan. Good on you. <laughs> and, uh, Best wishes to your mother, Joan, Steve. Thanks, my friend. It's, uh, yeah, I'll be hopefully seeing her uh, over the Christmas break because uh, she's, she's actually on the Northern Peninsula too. So all my family is oh my God. on the Northern Peninsula. But we'll <laughs> Thanks, Steve. All the best to you and your family and everybody yep. watching now and everybody watching on replay. Uh, all the very best. Thanks for joining me, guys. We'll see you soon.